Hello and welcome to this video, which is going to be a part one of a series of videos that are going to talk about some of my tips and tricks to avoid common mistakes when you first start writing a journal paper or a conference paper. Um, I've Over the years, I've seen a lot of those common mistakes repeated again and again, and I thought I'll share some of those um, tips and tricks with you to avoid those mistakes. Um, yeah, so stay tuned. All right, so in this video, we're going to focus on the planning stage uh, and the organization of, of your document, which is a super important step that many overlook. And what happens is generally, you'll end up with a document that's not well organized and it doesn't really convey the message. And once you spend some time organizing and planning, it'll demonstrate clear thinking because you've got things you know, organized in the right way. You'll have less trouble with reviewers and even your co-authors demonstrating the, the concept that you're talking about and so forth. So planning and organizing is super critical. It is, it's my number one tip, really. It's because when you organize things and plan it, it'll make the writing process a lot easier. A lot of the time when students typically sit down and start writing and feel lost because it's like oh, scratching their heads, you know, which way do I go? I feel lost, especially when it comes to thesis writing, whether it's a master's or a PhD, but we'll probably do that in a separate video. Um, but with respect to journal papers and uh, conference papers, planning is, uh, is essential. And what you can do in the planning stage is you can try putting together mind maps for the, the paper that you're about to write in terms of, especially if there's a complex topic that you're trying to break down. A mind map is so critical uh, and it is so useful as well because it, you will break that complex subject down and it'll give you a graphical sense of what that paper is about to look like. Um, in fact, sometimes if you spend a lot of time and do it properly, the mind map will end up being part of the paper and it'll end up being a figure in the uh, paper, which which is usually you know highly cited. Um, I definitely do that in my publications. The next thing is, is you can try putting down some simple lists um, of what the paper is going to do. What I prefer over just lists is a table of contents. So put together a table of contents, which is just your headings and subheadings, and sometimes even sub subheadings um, together in this document and start filling out under each heading and subheading the dot points of what will be the content of that um, heading or that section. And what you'll find is you start to get that nice skeletal structure, which makes it so much easier when you start writing. It just makes it quick. And that's what you want. You want to write those papers quickly, not scratch your head, not spend a lot of time thinking, oh my God, I'm so lost and bored and I hate this. You've got these points. In fact, even drop in your key references in there as well. And you'll find that writing becomes so much easier once you have this rough outline and much quicker as well. I generally ask my PhD students and my undergraduate students, whenever they're writing a paper, to actually sub give me a table of contents first so that we have something to discuss and talk about and go, for example, this section probably fits just above that section, it flows better, and we start kicking around ideas. Students put down some comments, um, dot points within each section, and subsection, and it's just, it makes life so much easier. Uh, for, for me as well, um, as the supervisor, um, or even for co-authors, you're writing this for co-author, if you've got co-authors, it makes it so much easier to communicate across what the paper is going to look like. And if you've got this up and running as a live document on a cloud or something that everyone can um, edit in a, a simultaneously, it's really great because you've got all these dot points and everyone can start working in their own sections. And as I said, drop in key references from your literature review, the process will be great and it'll be very, very quick uh, turnaround to get that paper out the door, uh, which is what you want. The, the other tip I want to also suggest is when you're writing your headings and subheadings, make sure you, you make the, the headings work for you. Make sure they're functional. Now, what do I mean? Avoid things like introduction. That's boring and it doesn't really tell much. Say you're talking about something that's to do with, you know, I work in the area of unmanned systems and air, un, unmanned air vehicles and um, their, their flight in turbulent environments. So I wouldn't say introduction. I would say, for example, um, the challenging environment of aircraft or the challenging environment of drones or whatever. Some, some heading that's functional rather than um, something that's, you know, introduction. It doesn't mean anything and it doesn't really convey the message. So think, think, about, think about that aspect. 
in in the in your process of putting together the the table of contents make sure that you also if you do plan to put any plots in there um sketch them out even if you don't have the plots now just sketch them out stick them in there and that'll again give a sense of where that paper is heading and especially if, if you're sharing it with others I can't emphasize how useful and important graphics are in illustrations. If you have a complicated, um, um, a complicated concept or whatever that you're trying to communicate as well, think about doing an illustration for it, even if it's sketching it by hand before then you use some advanced software or whatever to, to draw it properly, but just sketch it together and put it in there. That's usually a very helpful step. I've definitely done that. Um, and it's super um, useful. So for example, imagine trying to explain what the double helix structure of a DNA looks like uh, in words. Um, obviously, you've got a lot more visual impact if you've got a graphical illustration in there. So a picture is worth a thousand words, definitely. So think about including those in. Apparently, I'm good with those. Um, I've been doing them in my publications um, and I have received some good feedback, so I will be sharing with you, you know, in a, in a separate video, how I tend to do my illustrations. Um, so I'll, yeah, stay tuned for, for that. But yeah, um, definitely graphics are very powerful and it elevates the quality of your document significantly. So uh, I'll probably post link to, to the video once I have that completed. While you're writing the table of contents, I want you to think about a few things. I want you to think about the message. What message are you trying to get across? And that's very important. Um, and that ties in with the purpose, but we'll talk about that in a second. W what is your message? What are you trying to convey to the audience, to the, to the reader? Um, and audience, we just mentioned. So who are they? W what is expected? Um, what is the expected level of um, expertise that they're at? Do you, are you writing to a journal paper that's very specific to your discipline area? Or is it a broad kind of journal that accepts different disciplines? And the reason that's important is because that will influence the way you write. You might need to introduce some concepts and terminology if the, paper, if the journal is not um, um, specific to your discipline area. Uh, introduce some terminology and context. So it's it's good to gauge that from the start while you start writing. Um, purpose. Think about why am I writing this? Am I just throwing facts at people or am I actually trying to convey some sort of a, you know, a, a, a message? So yeah, as I said, message and purpose, they tie in together. So think think about that, but also within what scope. So back to purpose, with respect to purpose, you need to think about avoiding really throwing facts at me, right, as a reader. If you th just throw facts, 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 without tying it into some sort of an outcome or a conclusion, it becomes super confusing for me to comprehend what are you trying to tell us, right? And sometimes that happens at a sentence level or a paragraph level or even just the overall paper. You don't get a sense of where is that paper going, and that's so common, I see that all the time. So what you want to do is you want to always tie things to an outcome, whether that outcome is um, you're analyzing some presented data. Um, so you're not just throwing facts at me or um, actually on that point, a lot of the time, you know, a student does an experiment. He writes about it in a paragraph and then it's just, you know, I found that this is the result 6.9 meters per second and, and just facts, facts. But then yeah, I, I expect you to tie it at the end to, to tell me what your thoughts are as the expert that just wrote about this. What were your you know, observations? Why are you telling me these numbers and how does it all tie in together with respect to the big picture of the, of the paper? So that's what I expect to see. Um, and whether you're demonstrating a technique or a solution, um, whether you're doing uh, and, and you're reviewing all these different references don't just re you know this person did this this person did that without pulling it together into are you trying to show a new classification or a framework or are you trying to identify a research gap that needs to come out very clearly otherwise reviewers will will uh, definitely pick that up and you're going to go through a, a long review process um, and it just generally reflects upon you as a researcher or you as, as a student how 
how organized and how clear are you with respect to um, uh, your writing, essentially. So you wanna, you wanna focus on those. With respect to scope, one thing you wanna avoid is you wanna avoid branching out. So sometimes you're writing and you'll find it super easy to kind of get into the trap of, I'm gonna write a little bit about this subtopic, 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 and just it goes out of control. But you wanna, kind of limited and that's that's what i mean with scope now it depends though because sometimes your scope is actually to consider you know a lot of publications for example a review paper so you want to make sure that you're not um i guess even with a review paper you're not just kind of reviewing everything out there without coming back to this outcome or conclusion something i like you know, we call the, the funnel approach. So you start big and then you funnel and trickle down to this kind of idea or, or concept or outcome, whatever it is. Um, but don't just kind of branch out um, infinitely because you will never be able to kind of tie it back in. And, and usually that's why review papers are hard to write because they are about reviewing all these different, you know, references and usually for a big topic so that you come up with a, either a classification or, or a research gap. And usually that they take a lot of time. So yeah, think, think about that and always stick to that idea or outcome that you are, that message that you're trying to convey. Um, and yeah, with, with scope in general, avoid, avoid writing about big topics that are too broad, whether it being, you know, I'm gonna write about project management. That's a huge topic. Uh, or I'm going to write about unmanned systems. That's huge, you know. But instead, for example, um, you know, instead of using your title as, you know, unmanned systems, you can be specific. I'm exaggerating, obviously, but, you know, you can be specific. U UAV pose sensors and challenging flow conditions. You know, that's the area I work in. But it's, it's specific, it's to the point, and it, and it really um, demonstrates what is in, you know, that, what is in that paper. And that's usually captured in your title your abstract um, and uh, introduction and conclusion. The, re the reason I started there is because sometimes I don't even read the introduction. I usually read title, abstract, and conclusion. And that's not just me, that's a lot of people out there when they're going through a lot of review papers. It's only if it's relevant to me that I then delve in and look at more of the content, but otherwise I give it a miss. Um, so you, what you wanna ensure in your writing is you wanna ensure that you do capture the essence of your paper in the title, abstract, and conclusion. Um, and, you know, that's, it's, it's important, um, rather than it being too broad or too vague, essentially. So that's knowing that there are people out there that just read those, and it really needs to capture the essence. All right, so that's the end of this video. The next video is gonna focus on writing style, and we'll spend a bit more time about the different techniques and what you can do to make your writing a lot clearer, more concise, and that sort of area. Um, yeah, so hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for the next video. If you wanna subscribe and click the little bell button, you'll get notifications for the next video when it comes out. I'll see you then, take care, bye.